G'day. Join us today for the ultimate paddock to plate experience. We take a bunch of camels and turn them into a bunch of sausages. Welcome to the meat room. This is where we'll cut up camel and cattle that we want to eat ourselves. So in here, we've got a bandsaw. We've also got some beer brewing equipment, which we'll get Ant onto later on. We've got a sausage press and we've got a mincer so that we can make sausages out here ourselves for consumption on the station. Then over here, we've got our cool room. And what we've got inside is our camel legs and our camel back strap. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've got him. This will be easy. So we've got our back strap that we can tidy up. Usually we use that for steaks, but our goal today is to try and see if we've got close to 50 kilos of meat for sausages. But if not, we can always scale back our recipe. And so we've got the scales here, so we can weigh our, our camel legs before boning and then after boning and have a good idea of what percentage of meat we've actually got. So I'm nowhere near a butcher, but I'm half decent with a knife. I hope. So I'm going to be a lot slower than a professional butcher. I'm going to stuff it up, but luckily we're making sausages. So let's um, pull a leg out and have a look. Now we took the legs off the smaller ones. Let's have a look at how much this little leg weighs. 13.1 kilos. So we definitely aren't going to be getting our 50 kilos of sausage meat today. Let's uh, throw him up somewhere to work on it. And we'll get the blades ready. Blades coming back. Gonna have to get in the car. The hide is a really good insulator. Yeah, that's why you open it up. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. You didn't say that. No. But that's why we wouldn't be surprised if it's still a bit warm in here because the hides are- Such a good insulator. Such a good insulator, which is a real credit to the animal. We've just come up here. And if we can have a good look in here at this skin, we're going to just start getting into it. We at Prenti Downs have always been strong advocates for the use of camel meat in a productive way, but we've never stopped shooting camels.
we've just taken our um, our hide off. So it's one and a half kilos is the hide. So we had 13.2 kilos before. So we're just eating into our meat here now. So there's our, our hide. And as we go along, we're just going to, for the sake of it, weigh it out as we go. just see how much bone we have left. So again, we started out at 13 kilos. We got 2.9, so almost three kilos is the, the bone. And we had 1.1 kilos, 1.2 kilos of skin. So we're at uh, nine kilos off that leg. Do you think it was easier coming in from the top? Um, well, coming in from the top, there's less dirt that I've... Um... Oh, brought down onto it? Yeah. So just as a disclaimer or an apologetic note, as I'm sure most of you can tell, we do have the kids floating with us today. It is just us with the kids up here at the moment. Um, and kids will be kids and there's only so much background noise we can knock out of things. So for people with sensitive ears who don't, who can hear the kids and not, not much else, we do apologize, but we're doing the, the best we can with that. I guess that's kind of life, isn't it? It is, and kids will be kids. I'm very curious kids at that. I understand that a lot of people have seen the kids floating in and out of a lot of our videos. A lot of video, and specifically this one. And look, we understand that it might not be how everyone thinks a child should be exposed to some things, but it is our reality. The kids are there with us, they see the stuff with us and we can't and nor do we want to shelter them from those parts of the reality of how we live. Um, they see natural death and then they also see where we kill things yes and they understand that it's a finite process which i think is quite healthy you know to bring children up knowing and understanding death in that way um, they also have a very good understanding of where their food comes from they get their eggs from the chooks they get their vegetables from the garden they get their meat from the station yeah. they have a very good well-rounded understanding of uh, it's quite funny, <clears throat> for a long time the girls would ask us, even when we're serving chicken, you know, did, did you kill this one, Dad? So, they um, have a, a good balance, I think, of... Um... Yeah, and I mean, I've certainly noticed in the vegetable garden, and I think a lot of other people will be able to agree on this one, that kids try a lot more stuff when there's a bit of... Uh, ownership in a way over it. They've seen it grow in the garden. Sometimes they've helped to sow the seeds and water it and yeah, it's like that's that's Verity's tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. So it certainly becomes a sense of ownership, and I feel that they have a bit of that with the meat. It's it's an animal that they have seen and been involved in and been involved in. Yeah, and I feel that it certainly does help them um, to understand and accept the process.
Okay, so our bucket weighs 600 grams. This is our setup at the moment. Again, this very handy pool mudder to weigh this camel meat. Let's see how much we got. Let's weigh that bucket and then we tip it into the bowl and then we weigh the second bucket because bucket two is not going to fit in that. Power button, please. Thirteen point six, so thirteen kilos, because this was six hundred grams. Thirteen point four. So we need to minus the point six from both of them. So that puts this one out at an even thirteen. Then that becomes 12.8, does it not? See, I would have just gone. Have I done it correctly or no, not? Just give me a second. I would have gone 13, 13 plus 1, so that gives us 27 kilos minus 1.2, which gives you 25.8. 6 plus 4 is 10. Yeah. So it makes it 27. Minus 1.2. Okay. 25.8. So, Mr. Fancy Pants. No, it's just the way my maths works. <laughs> Not anyone else's math, just your math. Even though you hadn't even let anyone else do math. You just came over and took over the math. Just did it quicker. You didn't let me do it. No, see, I was quicker. <laughs> well, total 50 kilos mince meat required. So that's half. Yeah, so just half. Half. And what's the other one? How much does the other one use? 16.6. Okay, so it's easier, Matt. Just to halve just that. Just to halve the big bag. Right. Yeah. Now, I believe, so this is saying it's 3.75 kilos. All right, Mr. Fancy Pants Maths. Because you can do it quicker. Half of 3.75. Yeah, 1.875. He says as he's done the math on his phone. <laughs> ah, rotten. Okay, so. So this is the sausage meal that we're using. Ready? Yeah. Right, let's see what happens. Did someone made a suggestion earlier about um, splitting the batch? Mm. Yeah, about that suggestion. Terrible idea. So you know the term bangers for sausages? It actually comes from World War II. And it's because during rations, the butchers were putting more bread meal into the sausage mix. And it would absorb the oil. And then as you're cooking them, those sections of oil filled bread would pop making the little bang and that's why they call them baggins. So if anyone can confirm that information that would be great because to the rest of us that sounds like a jacked. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up.
what we look for in the camel and deciding which ones we're going to take mate from is the condition like with cattle if you've got coverage on the rear here and no sucking on the hump they're in poorer condition if they don't have that hump because that's their their storage that keeps them going and once they start going into that that's their reserve so you don't want something that's running on empty now we've had a couple of exceptional years out here and in the desert it's been even better and so the camels are in outstanding condition and as they come into our area we can take advantage of that and fill the freezers now we've got a fair bit of complaints from people uh, about wasting the meat it's a bit of a difficult market to keep operating in and it's not due to the due to the sustainability of the product it's actually to do with the market and that people don't want to eat this and at the moment aren't paying the premium price that it deserves being a free range organic chemical free sustainable meat but it doesn't mean we don't do what we can we've taken out more camels than we can store in our freezers here people talk about the wastage of the meat we've taken down 21 camels here and we are using as much as we can actually store in our freezers and we can't just stop shooting at once we get to a number because otherwise it educates the camels and they become used to the firearms which means as soon as they see a vehicle they will run now the animals we saw here today we took them out in a strategic manner targeting specific ones in the herd to pull them up so that we can get 100% control which means that there's no education apart from you our valued viewers being shown the premium quality of meat and how we control feral animals How's that, Barrett? Good. How's the sausage? So what do you think? If there are camel sausages at your local hardware store, would you have a crack? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, like, subscribe, share with your friends so they can see what it's like to live out here. And hopefully we can get camel into sausages near you.